Hey, this is Lewis from SoFly, and in this video I'm going to use Oxygen to create a really nice looking 3D button. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to add a section and center everything here and just add some padding so they have something to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a link, text link, and this is going to be our button. So here's the link. I'm going to add a class called My Button, and now we're going to make it 3D. Uh, using a combination of gradients uh, and box shadows and borders. So first thing we need to do is set our button color. I'm going to use a nice uh, light blue. And then our font color is going to be white. And we're going to use Antic Slab uh, 16 pixels. And it's going to look a little better if we just put one pixel of letter spacing between the text. I like, I like adding letter spacing on buttons. I think it, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, and then we're going to set the padding to actually turn it into a button. So use 15 pixels on the uh, top and bottom. And then I like to use the golden ratio for buttons. So just multiply by 1.6 and you got 24 pixels on the left and right. And I'm just going to write click my button. And now we have a really basic flat UI button. Now let's make this thing 3D. So the way we're going to do that is with uh, the CSS background image property and the CSS box shadow property. So I'm going to start by adding uh, my shadows. So I'm going to go box shadow. And the syntax for this parameter is uh, if you want the shadow on the inside of the button, which I do, you type inset. And then this is the amount from the left the shadow is going to come. This is the amount from the top, uh, and then this is the amount of blur, and then you got the color of the shadow. So I'm going to make this shadow red and somewhat transparent, just so you can see what I mean. So now we have a semi-transparent red shadow uh, coming from the zero pixels from the top, zero pixels from the left, and blurred. So I'm going to add five pixels from the top, or sorry, five pixels from the left, five pixels from the top, now you can see what's going on. So the first thing we want to do is uh, add a shadow to the bottom of our button so it looks like the light's coming from the top. So to do that, I don't want it to be from the left at all, I just want it to be from the bottom. So instead of using five, I'm going to use negative five. Uh, and I don't want much blur, I just want one pixel of blur. And uh, I don't want five pixels worth of shadow, I just want uh, one pixel worth of shadow. So now you can see there's kind of a small reddish line there. And obviously I don't want this to be red. I want it to just be darker, so I'm going to use black. And it's just a very subtle effect, 0.2%. Uh, so you can barely see it. I recommend watching this video in HD and full screen. Uh, here's what that looks like zoomed in. So zoom back out to actual size. Now we got the bottom of our button. Now we're going to add another shadow to the top of our button. And this is going to be white. It's going to make the top look a little lighter, as if the light is hitting the top and reflecting off. So I'm just going to add a comma, and then type inset 0 pixels, 1 pixel, 1 pixel of blur. And this time I'm going to make it white, and the same amount of transparency. So now it's a little lighter at the top, and a little darker at the bottom. And uh, now the next thing I'm going to do is add borders to the button. So I'm going to go to borders, and I want the border at the top to be lighter than the border at the bottom. And I want the border on the sides to kind of be in between. So I'll set all sides to have a one pixel solid border. And then just to make this quick, I'm going to go, I'll just use the color picker here. It's going to be black. And then I'm going to use transparency. And I'm going to set the sides of the button to, let's say, 0.2, 20% uh, transparent, 21% transparent. And then I'm going to set the top of the button to only 10% transparent. And then the bottom of the button is going to be 30% transparent, or I should say 30% opaque. So now the bottom border is slightly darker than the side borders, which is slightly darker uh, than the top border. So now we're kind of starting to get a 3D effect here. Just to make it look a little better, I'm going to add three pixels of border radius uh, so it looks a little more look like a button. 
So it's looking a little bit 3D, but here's what we're going to do to make it look a lot more 3D. We're going to add a gradient to the background to make this part of the button lighter and this part darker. So to do that, we're going to use the background image property. And you can set this to a URL of an image, which is its most common usage. But what I'm going to do is uh, create an image on the fly using CSS. So I'm going to use linear gradient. And then I'm just going to enter my first color. I'll make it red so you can see what's going on. 50% opaque red. And my second color, I'll make it uh, green so you can see what's going on. 50% opaque green, uh, close parenthesis. And now the button starts at the top is red and at the bottom is green. What we want to do is start it at the top, it's fully transparent, and then end it at the bottom as darker. But fully black is too dark. Uh, point 0.1 is a little too light. So we are going to use uh, point 0.1. Well, point 0.2 is a little too dark. So I'll use point 0.15. And now I have a really nice 3D effect on this button. Uh, one last thing I'm going to do, well, not the last thing, but one of the things, I'm going to add a shadow to the text to make the text kind of pop out. So I'm going to use the text shadow parameter. Text shadow, it's the same as box shadow, but this isn't going to be inset. We want it outside of the text. So instead of typing an inset, we'll just specify where we want it. One pixel from the left, one pixel from the top, uh, one pixel of blur, and we're going to make this black, but fully black is too dark. It's a little too light, too dark. That's pretty nice. Point three. So now we have a really nice 3D button. Uh, looks good on a white background. So now I'm going to show you a trick to get this looking good on a dark background. So I will duplicate this. I'll change the background color of this section to sort of a dark blue gray. Now, when you're doing borders, uh, if your button is on a light background, you want the button borders to match the color of the button. So you got a blue button, you got slightly darker blue borders. But if you're doing the button on a dark background, you want the borders of the button to match the color of the background. So we got a dark background, a black background, we want sort of grayish borders. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use what's called the background clip property in CSS. So I'm not going to enter this for the class because I don't want it to apply to this button. I only want to do it for this button right here, so I'll use the ID. And background clip lets you specify which part of the element the background covers. So I want the background to only cover the, well, okay, let me show you the different parameters. There's content box, which makes the background only cover the content. Uh, then there's the default, which means it's going to cover the whole thing, including the borders. Uh, but there's also padding box which means it only covers the uh, content and the padding, and it doesn't affect the borders. So as you can see now, if I zoom in, the borders are dark. You're just barely going to be able to tell on YouTube, so I'd recommend following along with this. If I zoom in and uh, here I'll highlight this and then I'll cut it out. I cut it, now you can see the borders turn blue, paste it back in, borders are dark. So now we got it looking good on both a light um, and a dark background. Now it's time to just add some hover effects and click effects. So what we want to do on hover is just make the button a little bit lighter. So the way we're going to do that, actually, uh, since we already set the background image, there's two ways we could do the hover state. We could make it lighter on hover, but that's not fun because now we have to set the background color twice. So there's a kind of a tricky way to do it where we don't have to actually change the background color. What we can do is change the background image to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to copy this background image here. I'm going to go to the hover state. I'm going to paste it in. And after this, I'm going to add another gradient. And it's just going to start at white. And it's going to end at white. So this is just going to cover the button in white right now. So that's no fun. We just want to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to go 0.1% white, 10% white. So now when we hover, it's a little bit lighter. It barely gets lighter. Now we need to add a click effect. So it needs to look like the button is being pressed down. So that means we need to remove the shadows, remove the gradient, um, and maybe put the bottom shadow where it's dark on the top of the button. So I'm going to just copy the... Uh, the box shadow here, 
I'm going to add a state called active. Active is the state that the button's in when it is uh, being pressed down. So I'm just going to enter in active. And when the button's active, what I want to do is, well, I want to, I don't want, I want to remove one of these shadows. I'm going to remove the white shadow. We're not going to use that at all. And then I'm going to put the uh, dark shadow, this is going to be on the top instead of the bottom. So I'm going to move this to the top. See, now, now it's on the bottom. Now it's on the uh, top. It makes the button look a little pressed. And I'm going to use a little bl more blur on the shadow. I'll use three, five, a little too much. Use four pixels of blur. So now, I mouse over the button, it gets lighter, click it, and it looks like I'm kind of pressing down. Now, one thing I don't like is that when I click it, is it getting darker? No, it's not getting darker. It's just not light enough when I hover. So I am going to edit the hover state a little bit, just make it a little bit lighter, 0.15. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so now it looks like we're clicking and we press down. We can make the click effect even more pronounced if we move this text down by a pixel. So to do that, I'm just going to go back to the active state. Before we had 15 pixels of padding on the top and 15 on the bottom, I'm going to add only 14 on the top and 16 on the bottom. Or sorry, I should say 16 on the top and 14 on the bottom. And that's going to have the effect of moving the text down by one pixel. Okay, there we go. Those are our 3D buttons. So if you want to change the background color, it's as easy as just coming in here and editing it. And it's going to be edited for all of the states. So let's save this. Uh, take a look on the front end. And there we go. Here are our lickable 3D buttons. Now you can make these look even cooler if you want, and I'm going to. I'm going to go to uigradients.com. I already pulled up this gradient. I think it's really nice. Uh, it's just another linear gradient, so I'm going to copy the CSS here. And instead of using a color for the background of the button, I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to put this gradient um, at the end of the existing background image. I'm going to remove that part, remove those comments. And now we have a really nice, rich, red background. Uh, the problem is that now you're going to have to, you don't get to use the background color trick anymore, so you've got to adjust the gradient for all your states, uh, which is fine. I can do that. I'm going to go to the hover state, um, add the gradient at the end, and then we'll go to the active state. And the gradient's already on the active state, so because we don't have a background image property specified. So let's save this and take a look on the front end. And these are some really really nice buttons. Here, I didn't mean to click that. Let's take a look one more time. Yeah, I would I would lick these. These are these are beautiful. Okay, that is how you create 3D buttons uh, using oxygen. I'm going to componentize these so you can check in the video description. If you don't want to actually reproduce this yourself, you're just going to be able to go to the components section of oxygen and uh, add this to your page. And if you want to, I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you wanted to try this yourself, uh, you don't have to buy Oxygen. You can just go to oxygenapp.com try, and you can create your own demo install uh, of Oxygen.